Oh my, it's Kelly White. Hey, it's Change Grand Pog. What are you up to? Thinking about changing the world. Me too. We should do a show together. What would it be about? Let me show you. Who happens to her on the camera? Hi, <laughs> Hi Shanti. Nice to see you. Shanti's a very special friend. Thank you. Yes. We've we're... been friends for over 20 years now. Oh, yes. And Shanti did the makeup on my show Beyond that I had for you. And she helped me get through that show of daily, the daily wow. grind of taping a show talking to dead people. Oh my God. And you said you did that four days a week? Four days a week from five o'clock in the morning to five in the afternoon. That means two, two, three, three or four shows. And sometimes seven. And sometimes seven. And then, and seven. And then we do shoots so outside the studio. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. <laughs> and we do outside these things, people's houses out in the middle of nowhere. Wow. And it was um we just yeah, we just did it. I tell you, if I didn't have Shanti, I wouldn't be here because it was it was a head turner. It was a I burner. bet. Yeah, it's it was a burner. A, it was a burner. <laughs> and didn't you say that you can see those episodes on your Yes. Way? So the Beyond YouTube. show that I did, I put them, we downloaded them all onto YouTube. Oh. So they're on my YouTube channel, James R. Prague YouTube channel. And um, become a member, click on it, subscribe if you could. That'd be great because that way the YouTube will you show it more often and get it out to more people. And um, yeah, then we're growing that YouTube channel to something bigger and it's going to happen. So yeah, it's not all the episodes. And I have, you know, really dark hair and dark mustache. <laughs> <laughs> and this complexion of Shanti and uh, big ties and some, some great shows. Those some great episodes we did. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Some good ones. So yeah, Beyond Show, some of you too. Wow. How are you doing, Kelly White? I'm doing great, thank you. How are what's going on in the heavens? Oh, let me tell you what's going on in the yes, heavens. It's, it's eclipse a lot. season. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're coming into eclipse season, but let me just say. Really put your seatbelts on for the next couple of weeks here because we have a lot of transformation, a lot of change that's coming along, a lot of heavy duty emotions, a lot of emotions. So you really kind of want to be able to express yourself without getting too much trouble. So what I mean by that is on November 10th, so in two days, November yeah, when, 10th, my Mars, will be here. <laughs> oh, great. So yeah. Mars is in Scorpio and Mars is going to square Saturn, which is in Aquarius. And that's going to be frustration and anger. Watch authority figures because Saturn rules authority figures and Mars won't have anything to do with it, particularly when it's in Scorpio. It's almost a loose cannon that way. So you really want to watch um, making, let's say you work for somebody that you don't like or you want to make a change. You know, probably that's not a day to make a change, but just watch your energy. Patience is going to be a virtue it's really for intense, the next intense day. The 10th is a Scorpio. very intense yeah. day, you know, yeah. and then on the 15th of November, the sun again in Scorpio squares Jupiter in Aquarius. And that's, let me see, Jupiter is expansive. And so this is going to be about watch overdoing, watch overdoing anything that you're doing. This brings in some moderation. This brings in discipline. So this is all about, um, if, you know, don't take on too many projects right now. This is not the, really the time to do that. Okay, as a transforming my house right now. Oh, I know, but you had already started that. I already just, started that, so it's You fine. know, and the other thing is you also have the ability, James, to just ride everything out. I've seen you do it a million I, I, times. I, I, this morning as I walked to my, my yeah. kitchen and everything's all over the place and flying. Oh, I saw the there. pictures. The pictures, so I'm like, yeah, it'll be fine because yeah. I think of the end end result, yeah. which is beautiful. So that's when people get in, in those spaces of oh, right. this is crazy. Work. See the bigger picture, right? The bigger picture. It's going to work right. out. It's beautiful. All this is necessary to make things beautiful. Absolutely. So you go through life like that too. The steps we have to take to make things balanced, to make things beautiful. It's worth and you've it. never feared change. No, you kind of run into it. <laughs> I kind of do that. Yeah, yeah I like fast it, trains too. Yeah. Trains. There's, there's a fire. Train. I'm running into it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, but that, that's all that fire in my chart, too. Know, it's so I, true. It's so true. And then on November 17th, Mars again in Scorpio is opposing Uranus, and that's retrograde in Taurus. And that's a very intense day. I mean, these days are very intense. It's a lot of anger, a lot of outbursts. So you really want to watch. It's not a good idea uh, to you know, be impulsive on that day. You really kind of want to 
if you can step back, take some deep breaths. This is all it's in a very emotional time. And then we go on the 19th and on the 19th of November is we begin eclipse season. And this, is, oh, yep. and this is a full moon eclipse, lunar eclipse in Taurus. And that, you know, a normal full moon brings a lot of emotion. So now you add an eclipse to that. And that's a very intense time. And also for the first time, we're on the Taurus Scorpio axis. And that's going to be, has a lot to do with energetic bonds with people. So you want to, you're going to be making some changes perhaps with people that you've been involved with because e uh, lunar eclipses bring endings. So there would be some endings to some things that you may have begun six months ago. <laughs> and eclipses last about six months. So then, oh my gosh. And then on December 4th, we have the solar eclipse. And uh, that's going to be a big, huge deal. The other thing I want to say about this eclipse, which I think is really fascinating, is that it's the longest eclipse of our century. November 19th of this oh, century. November 19th is our longest eclipse. And think about that. That really means it's trying to set the point. <laughs> like I'm trying to make a point. It's trying to set the point on that one. It's a big deal. Isn't that something? That's, so that's It's going to be, um, I think we're going into some life-changing things. And then when we get to December 23rd, we so have. Let me, you, yeah, let me interrupt you by just saying too, Scorpio, which we're in November, right? Mm -hmm. Scorpio, right? November, yep. right now we're in. A, we're now, yep, we sure are. It's the transformation sign. Right. It's so what they call it. Zodiac. That's the. That's what? it. It means death and rebirth. Death and you and know, rebirth. last week you and I talked about, it seems to me more people have passed in November for me personally. I mean, you, we, we've seemed to, we've yeah. had that same conversation before. Not that I had a conversation right before we came on that, you know, the, there's a major exit point between November and February. That's a major right. exit point. But people well, leave. We've seen that. The elderly I've people. seen that too. And interesting enough, on December 23rd is the final of the third Uranus square, Saturn square Uranus. And it's the biggest astrology event of the year. It's going to be a real powerful. So whatever between this week, the, the first eclipse, then the solar eclipse in December, and then this big square, expect big change coming up, you know, for it, for humanity and for our individual. So you start doing the work, letting go of anything that's no longer serving you. That's the best, best thing you can do. I've just been doing that. I know you have. <laughs> You're good at that. Cleaning out closets, getting, I'm very literally, my, my tr pickup truck, yes, I do have a pickup truck. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's full of old things, to, well, old things, clothes, things that I'm giving away and donating. And it's a great changes. thing to do. Yeah, you bring that to someone else's life, for uh -huh. sure. That's great. Yeah. I, and afterwards, I have to call you up because I have two people I got to tell you about that. Okay. Need your help. Okay. You got it. <laughs> so today I did the soul care, and a lot of people that are watching here are watching it. And it was great because um, our wonderful producer, Renee, um, sharing with us about the, the mantra about helping people pass over to this side. And um, we're going to do a show on that, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's really, yeah. really important. Mm -hmm. And um, T R A Tramacum mantra anyway we're gonna do a show of that um but today uh this is said you know what this came up for me thought about this spirit photography yes and, and and a lot about orbs and a lot of people talk about orbs and what are orbs and um most people would say well isn't that my loved one is it a spirit is it a guide who is that i was talking about it today when i saw care yeah. and um and then you've researched it too it's probably today but it was most common i think people know about spirit spirit photography if you want to call it that and techniques change over the centuries over the years things right. have changed change devices change so you know now you can capture because of the digital age you can capture things now that you wouldn't be able to 20 30 years ago that's what the, I was reading a lot about spirit photography and it started like in the 19th century. I mean, this has been going on for era. some time. The Victorian era. Yeah. It yes. Was very, Victorian era was a big uh, spirit photography t time, the Renaissance, if you will. And, and it, you have to remember the time, the, the world at that time too, was things were changing after the industrial revolution, things were being developed. And also if the, it was almost like, I think, I think the world war one. So 1918 get into there. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of spirit photography and people said, why would that be? He said, well, World War I, a lot of people pass over and there's a desire to see their loved ones. And that's when a, a large chunk of it also happened. Around the, it around also the happened earlier on in the Civil War too. And Civil it's War. Civil sorry. War. That's right. yeah. Civil War. The 1860s. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, 
And that's where it started a lot. That's right. That's right. And England and it started in England and in America. And it was a big, big deal. Big deal. Yeah. So yeah, tell us what you found. Kelly. Well, what I found is spirit photography is also called ghost photography. It's a type of Never photography. Of yeah. It's a type of that. photography whose primary goal is to capture images of ghosts and other spiritual entities, especially, uh, and it goes back to, I should say, the late 19th century. But yeah. here's, I think, something really fascinating. It says, what they would do is they would take a picture in a conventional manner and they would find things on that print that were not in the visible range of the naked eye when the picture was taken. Sure. And how you've always said, James, that the etheric world has intelligence. So what sure. the belief is and what I got from the Encyclopedia Psychic Dictionary said that I have a copy of, by the way, an old it's an old book. It's not a print. Isn't that something? And I happen to have it. And I also cite Encyclopedia of Psychic Sciences. Which oh, is my also. gosh. Well, it says the etheric world intelligences transfer the objects, words, lights, or portraits of deceased persons onto the negative when taken. So the intelligence of the spirit world, of the etheric world, has the ability to transfer that on and you've always we've you and I have always talked about you've always said about the intelligence of the the other side the intelligence yeah, of the spirit world. I mean, come on, we look at the for the seasons that we change the, yeah. the planet the planets moving. Yeah. I mean, these things that we breathing, you know, not consciously breathing all the time, unconsciously, we just just naturally breathe. The rhythm of life. I mean, it, there's an intelligence there, which right. it's so beyond us humans. I mean, right. So that makes sense with this. Um, you know, I said it today in my show. It's it's almost as if you know you have that different dimension, let's say a seventh or eighth dimension, and you think about that the finer the finer vibration, the frequency, the finer material, if you can call it that, and they take a very fine 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 material and they have to bring that down to a heavy, dense, dense frequency, just to do that alone to change that that energy down to a heavy, dense vibration. I don't know what they have to do for that. That's pretty amazing. Right. That they, slow, they have to slow it down. So true. So, they have to, right. This invisible string. And now they have to create it even larger and more dense. And they have to make this bigger and bigger and bring matter into it. And, and everything is created with thought. So, of course, wow. it starts with thought. So they, they work They work over there all the time in developing these things. And they have, like, we call them, I guess, laboratories down here. Don't call them that over there. But the places that they work on these, they have chemists over there. Yeah. Albert Einstein, the first one over, he became very involved in life after death communication. Also involved, by the way, with, and he, he was a firm believer in it. Um, uh, and Edison was a real big one, also with spirit photography, by the way. Wow. Edison. Edison tried to do things on before he left on spirit photography and also using the telephone, the communication systems. He was very into it. Isn't so, that amazing? Yeah, a lot of well, great would history would you like to see a picture? Yeah, so, so there are many people who should let people know that there, that there was a big thing like the 1860s, 1870s, and the, at the end of the 19th century there. And, and, uh, and it was so popular that everywhere he went, spirit photography, but then there were fakes. There were yes. obvious fakes. Yeah. And, um, you can see the difference. I, mean, I have some photos. So I know you have some photos. Um, and I have a great book that I'm going to share with everybody, Photographing the Spirit World. Um, oh. And it's something that's beyond the spectrum. There's Ooh. a certain spectrum of light that we have. And all the colors, the rainbow, right? But then there's an unseen to the human field of vision. There's a spectrum beyond that. Wow. So really, when you think of what I was just talking about, that's going with energy from another spectrum and bringing it down to ours, basically. Wow. And using all the things they can magnetically, colors, the vibration to bring it down and imprint that onto a film. <laughs> it's like, isn't that amazing? It's amazing. It's wow. Amazing. Yeah. Gosh. Wow. So, should we see something? Would you like to see a picture? Yeah. All right. Uh, Renee, would you put number one up, please? Kelly's like working with a teacher, a professor. Yeah. <laughs> I am. I can't help it. I'm a, I'm a Virgo. Okay, so very this famous. you've heard of Stanley Hotel. We were gonna do a shoot at the Stanley Hotel. We were gonna do a shoot out there in Colorado. The Stanley this is a very famous one. Tell us about this. Well, the it's famous for it's where the um movie um with Jack Nicholson, um God, I was just talking about it, was was filmed shining, there, shining. The Shining. So this picture was taken at the Stanley Hotel in Colorado, and it shows this was taken in 2016, and it shows a figure standing at the top of the staircase. So if you look okay. You can see it, and then it's a closer picture here. And um, I've been there. Have you been there, James? I haven't been there. Um, I didn't. I was invited there for the shoot, and I didn't want to go. Mm. But I was once on Larry King show, 
And there was another guy who was um, um, psychic or medium, medium mystic psychic or a paranormal investigator, I guess you'd say. Ah. And he was doing it from, he was doing the remote from this, that hotel. And I remember I got the shivers when I looked at him. I just didn't, I didn't like the oh. feeling there. Oh, it, I was what, there. What, oh, what? Uh, it fl flipped me out. I didn't like the energy at all. I couldn't stand yeah. the energy. Couldn't wait to get out, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't feel comfortable there at all. Isn't it interesting? So we have another picture, Renee. Oh, this was really oh, interesting. Now look at this. One. Have you seen this one, James? No. So this is an alleged apparition of Lord Kamamir. And this happened, I think it was in the 19, early 1900s or late 18 something. Oh, okay. And you can see the man sitting there. Totally, you know? I see him, yeah, I see him. Yeah, so I'm not sure who took this picture, but uh, this and was a famous on, one. On the right, also. Yeah. Now this is interesting. And if you, yeah, but I, I also become aware of like behind the man, the chair. It looks like there's a face back there. It's mm. hard to see the, the light. It's like a guy yeah. with a goatee almost. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. All right, Renee. Thank you. Can we see another one, please? I have a whole book of them. You have <laughs> a whole book of them. Oh my gosh. Let me just show you these, and then we'll see. Yeah. All of this. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Now this is really interesting. This wow. was uh, recently. This I, was I a ghost. I don't, I don't know if I believe this is real. But well, what I read was that there was a, a young girl about 12 years old and she took a picture of her cousin. Her cousin's on the left. And when she oh, took okay, the that picture. Okay, that makes sense. Then she saw this woman that appeared, and uh, they call it the sighting of the Gray Lady of Hampton Court. Uh, for, and it was taken from an iPhone. And the interesting thing Ooh. about using iPhones now is that yeah. they can capture a lot of things that back in the Very day, they'd have to take a negative and everything here. It just captures it. You have to admit, I, that's... That's a good one. Now, so the reason I thought it was fake is the girl, the, the real, the live girl. That's why I thought, oh, wait, that's not a... But I see now that, that she is live. But the the app or the spirit next to her, now, isn't that interesting? Because she definitely looks, um, what was it, Victorian or before yeah. that? Yeah. The long dress, the blue dress. Mm -hmm. She looks like she's wearing a veil of some kind. Yeah. She looks like she's in mourning, doesn't she? She's like, looks oh, like, yeah, could be. Wearing a veil, sure. it looks like. Yeah. So she must be in mourning. Which and I've been to Hampton Court. I, I've been there. It's it's haunted. Oh yeah, I've been to Hampton Court, but two 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 or three times. Once when I was fourteen years old, the first time I was there. <gasps> Where and, is um, it? In England? In England. It's in England. Wow. Yeah, it's not too far out of London. Yeah, it's not too far out of London. Yeah, it's it's a nice place. I liked it actually. I didn't feel too bad about that. Wow. Um, wow. Okay, and I think I have the last one, Renee. And this one, I this is very interesting. I got this from the Spirit Book which oh, yes. I think is, I, I love that book. But this one, in. now, th I think you are, James. This I one was taken in 1904 by a man named Richard Burnsell. And he said, this is a photography photograph taken of myself by myself on a Sunday when there was not a living soul in the room beside me. The form on my right, I recognized as my cousin who had passed away 12 years before. Wow. So that's interesting, huh? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow. Well, this is, um, I'm going to show you this one. This is a Dr. Alex. Now, I should mention, by the way, there were two very well-known spirit photographers. Uh, William Hope was one, yeah. and the other one was, um, uh, hold on a second, uh, Edward Wiley. Edward oh. Wiley, W-Y-L-L-I-E, and um, and he did his work from 19, early 1900s to 1920. And uh, yeah, William Hope was another one. This is a picture they captured, and this is um, Alexander Delhi of Rothe. Spirit image of him and his twin brother Robert, who had died. So I'll show you that. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Wow, that's something. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that, and and you know, there also there there are times where. Um, uh, it's it's fakes and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you can capture, by the way, um, and this is a great book. It's out of print now, but this is a wonderful book called The Photography of the Spirit World. Oh, wow. Okay. And yeah. um, great issues, so I'm going to share with you. You know, we're talking about table tipping. We should have shown that because your, your grandfather. My grandfather table. was a table tipper. <laughs> I used to, uh, I, I did table tipping when I was uh, in, in Hollywood when I lived there up there in my development circle. 
and actually have tape. I think I found a cassette tape today it's sitting right on that old box. And I think that is me in a in a trance with a golden feather my guide coming through and playing the table like a tom tom. And it's either that or it's that Leslie Flint. We're gonna do a Les Sean Leslie Flint yeah. the, the medium. So it's either one of those. But I remember when we're table tipping. So what, even even if you want to call it the force, psychic force, whatever energy mm -hmm. you want to call it, that gives the impressions on that print. Right. There's a, there's an energy. There's a force, and also a yeah. force when you do table tipping, which is a similar force. And they captured actually a photo, a table tipping experiment, photographed in complete darkness using infrared flash by Kay Batchelor, seen uh, at front left operating the rubber bulb of the camera remote shutter control. So he's taking a picture as the table is tilting. And now you can say. Well, you'll just see it. It couldn't be done otherwise. There's no other way of doing this. You couldn't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Because if the yeah. guy in there that's honey all the way down, is, 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 he would fall down at that angle. Sure. Wow. So yeah. Wild. Isn't that so wild? <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> and to think my family did that. <laughs> and, and they use, you know, to do the table. So we, the, oh, there's okay. Lincoln. Okay. This is, James, you talk about this one because this is phenomenal. Yeah, so this is, so Abraham Lincoln and his wife were very much into a, a spiritualism because he lost, I think, two children. And um, he wanted to get in touch. They used to have regular seances at the White House. And then after um, uh, Lincoln was assassinated, which, of course, he, he knew that was going to happen, he had a premonition of it, there was um, a well known photographer, I have that, obviously, that picture in here. And um, they captured the wife uh, sitting there. It's a very famous. Uh, spirit photograph of his wife. It is, um, let me just see, photograph of President Lincoln's widow was William, another fam famous photographer, William H. Mumler, Mumler M U M L E R. He was most famous for uh, photo this is his most famous photograph, although Mumler did not know at the time that his sitter, okay, where you hear this one. Are you ready for it? Yeah. So Mr. Mumler did not know at the time that his sitter was Mrs. Lincoln. <gasps> Mary Todd. Wow. He, he thought this was her. Wow. And, and this, is, this is a well-known story, too. Um, the spirit form of the assassinated president and their late son appeared behind her in the photograph. So, Ray, put that back up if you don't oh mind. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Because you'll see to his, this, this is the son. Well, you can see on on, a, on, Lincoln's, on her left above, mm -hmm. that's their son. You can make out that's a face right there. Wow. That's their son. Older, he's older. He has a mustache. Looks like you see his eyes, kind of a profile. You know, wow. and then there's Lincoln in there. So he's with his son. Wow. And uh, by the way, very, very psychic. Uh, Lincoln was very psychic. You know, my whole Abraham Lincoln story. I'll share with someone. Yeah. We'll, we'll do maybe famous history. One that day would be this. fun. Because I brought through Ben Franklin and all that. We should talk about all these people that have come through. And Abraham oh, Lincoln. I'm going to make a note of that. That'd be great. <laughs> I think people would love that. Was, he was a guide of mine. He was his and his counsel, if you will. And I can share that story, but Abraham Lincoln was very into spiritualism, very much the, he was Aquarius and um, I knew that he had a great calling, knew that there was a great calling with that civil war. And I mean, there's some wonderful um, uh, speeches he did. He wrote some wonderful letters regarding it. He knew that his calling was for humankind and to bring humankind up to a certain level. And it was really hard for him because he wanted to pit North into the South. He believed in all humans are equal. And it was an interesting mm. time, but yeah, great, wonderful being. What a deep soul. Deep soul, yeah, deep soul. God. It's so funny because wow. I have a big statue of his face. Of Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Wow. I have a nice big book of his life. Mm. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> sure, of course. It makes sense. Well, mm. um, let me show you some more of these because this is really interesting. Um, now, there's a substance that people might not know, but the spirit photography, well, in spirit photography, we're not just going to be seeing the spirit, but many times they capture mediums, so medium, physical mediums, where the ectoplasm um, the, the, and a substance called ectoplasm, which is made of, say, cellular material. Um, and everybody has this ectoplasm, but it seems mediums have more of it produced in the body. Ah. And I'm developing as a physical medium, this ectoplasm exudes out of the body through either the nose, the ears, the mouth, or believe it or not, the stomach. Wow. And I've had seances where this happened. I myself have had a spirit um, use ectoplasm. I felt it coming out of my ear. Wow. Uh, and it took time to build it up. I mean, it doesn't just yeah. kind of build it up. So they captured here on the left, I'm show you, is dated October 2nd, 18, 1928. This is one of a series of photographs taken by FCE Dominic, showing ectoplasm exuding through the clothes of the medium Mrs. Henderson. This is very, very real. Let's see. 
Let Oops, I it. can't see it. No. Yes, get that. So, there you go. There we are. Uh, I'll be oh my gosh. And many times you'll capture you'll capture faces. Oh and my gosh. Arms and wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jennifer says sounds like a sticky situation. <laughs> It's a strange, it's a strange um, scent, and there's a smell to it. There's a certain smell. Is it cold? Uh, this is a, it. it, it um, yeah, it's more of a cold than heat, I'd say. Okay. Um, cotton candy ish ish. Um, here's another very famous photograph, which was a spirit hand seen. You know, we talk about wrapping and tables and all yeah. that sort of thing. Spirit hand wrapping on the underside of the table in this rare photograph of ectoplasm taken at Mrs. Everett's Circle by William Hope, well-known photographer, mm -hmm. in February of 1931. Where do you see this one? Check this out. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Look at the hand. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Look at the ectoplasm. Yeah, wow. Wow. And ectoplasm is very sensitive material, and it can be produced in certain conditions. So it's got to be usually a dark condition. Lights will affect it. So it's hard to build that ectoplasm with, with light there to, to manifest it. So it's got to be in certain conditions, usually the darkest time. The dark, 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 they can produce it. Um, and also, it's very, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, that the, when they used to sit in physical circles. Right. These red light is because originally they would people would sit at the end of dinner time or supper, they'd go into the sitting room and sit and chat over the fire with the fireplace going, <laughs> which would be the red embers. Ah. So that's the thing, and the red light came down. Wow, <laughs> wow, that's just amazing. And, and many times you see, um, when you sit in a circle, a, a development circle, or sit in a seance, even even when you do readings, spirit will come in, but they call them psychic rods, and as, as protection, if you will. And they, they set up the space with psychic rods. So it's kind of energetic, keeping the con energy contained within that circle, that space. And um, this is a very famous uh, picture, holds an ectoplasmic rod, clearly seen in this photograph on a seance with Kathleen Gullier. And this is probably done in the 1940s, I would think. So. Let's see. Oh my gosh! Wow, James, isn't that that's amazing? Like yeah. Wow, that's I never cool. heard that expression or psychic that thing rods. before. Yeah. Yes. Psychic oh, rods. Yeah. Wow. I psychic rods around. I was aware when they were there, um, and a very famous, or oh, a very famous medium, um, who who and they capture this in the spirit photography here at the phenomena in infrared. Um, so when, when the spirit materializes, uh, ectoplasm comes, they have to form, they form faces or body parts or whatever it is, yeah. or a voice box. Like we're going to have a show in a couple of weeks. We have right. Leslie Flynn and the voice, they made artificial voice box. A very famous, one of the most famous physical mediums was Jack Weber. And uh, they captured a photograph of him in infrared light with materialization can be seen um, beginning to grow through the clothes of the medium Jack Weber. Wow. Check this out. Okay. Wow. Oh my, oh my gosh. Look at that. Jack Weber. Yeah. Incredible. Wow. Man. Wow. So. That's amazing. <laughs> oh and my Kelly, God. A lot of people want to talk. Oh, here's another one. I could have, I have to. So I, I love this. Energy can be seen beginning to build up on the right of this sort of, of media, Mrs. E. Bowler. So this is probably 1970s, I would think. Six, okay. Okay. In the development circle, and they took a picture of her, and the energy is building up. So, a picture of this is her, and the energy is building up. I could see that, yes. Wow, now, I look there in front of her, okay. And this is when the energy is there. Oh my gosh, look at that! They captured That's it, amazing. And so, you know, we talk about orbs, spirit orbs, and people yeah. want to spirit orbs. That's spirit photography too. So that's to me. Did you look up something on orbs, Kelly? You heard, heard you talk about orbs. You We're talking up. about um, or I. Orbs. I, so, so many times different it, colors. They are. So their orbs are concentrated energy, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and this is my belief system. I don't know, but I believe it's it's concentrated energy from the spirit world, mm -hmm. and I do believe that they they really send they concentrate and work at bringing in that uh, energy and placing in that space, if you will, uh, yes. or on the. Um, and I thought this morning I was talking about this on my show that many people don't realize that spirit orbs, you know, when people send me these pictures of these orb lights, that it's interesting. Not everybody can capture them. Not everybody can capture right. them. Right. But 
Oh, I should have chosen the picture. Mm. Um, not everybody can capture them, but I will tell you that usually the person that's taking the picture is the medium. And you know, I wondered right. about that. I, I just have to assume that because somebody wrote a question, a woman named Patty Weeks, and I had to write this down. She said, can spirit photography be a path into psychically seeing spirit and communicating with spirit on levels beyond the camera? Of course, because they're using yeah. the energy of the photographer to come through. They're using that ah. energy. So that's of, why not everybody can do this. Correct. correct. Wow. Um, I mentioned this morning on my show that um, I talked about Lincoln again. I went to the Ford Theater with Jordy and nobody was there. <laughs> and she said, sit on the stage. And she's very psychic, very mediumistic. Yeah, and totally. And, and, and I was sitting on stage and she took photographs and she gets orbs everywhere. Well, that photograph, which I, I don't have with me, but the, there's a photograph of me sitting on stage and there are thousands of orbs around me. Thousands oh my gosh! Faces, and you see uh, a face. You see a full body, and some some you see some of you just lights, different different intensities, different energies, different colors, different shapes. Wow. Well, I was on on a cruise with you when you were in a big room, and we took a bunch of pictures, and it was hundreds and thousands of orbs with all colors and all shapes. It was unbelievable. Let me just show you this picture, James. I did a, a workshop this, or a, I went to an event this week where I spoke, and a woman came up to me who did the book. She wrote a book and it's called In Spirit. And it's a story about her best friend who died recently. And when her best friend died, she said, show me a sign. And that was the sign when her best oh, friend wow. died. Is that something? Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Amazing. Yeah, there, there, there's a picture. And I just remembered I had it. But uh, mm -hmm. there's a photograph of, um, I'm not going to mention who it is, but it's a family, it was a family member. Um, and... Um, I don't know who took this photograph. It was, it was Christmas time. It was Christmas. And it was interesting. But all the kids were there and they were opening the presents. They were smiling at the camera. And you see this when it was developed. And you see the father had passed reaching over to the granddaughter of the hand. You see his face and his body. Oh. And you see the other people there putting their arm, hugging the kids. And it's a really clear picture of spirits wow. around there. And it was done through, a, you know, just as someone who was, who was a medium. But um, something they didn't tend to do it, just they use that energy. But remember, holiday time spirits are around us even more so, they're always right. around. And that, that love and that joy brings them in, they can that vibration helps. Yeah. Here's two, two psych uh, spirit photographs, which are also very famous. And I've seen this before. It's so funny before I even I had this book years ago, I had seen these beforehand. Then I got this book, and, oh, here they are again. So, this is a very famous one, uh, and it was done, I believe it was England, I'm okay. sure, and it was uh. Uh, Robert Harris photographer um, and he was with um, his wife was a medium named Bertha Harris and they went to a church and they took a picture of this beautiful organ and when they got the film developed this is what showed up let's see it's a man playing the organ that's a spirit oh my gosh that's a spirit man oh wow the organ. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> so they take a picture imagine this and then she was a medium you see wow um, Amazing. Now, this is an interesting one too, which I don't know if we can make it out, but we can. Another famous spirit uh, photograph, and this was done in Stockholm, Sweden. Okay. And it was a cathedral built in 1577. And um, when the pews were done, they were we worked with the breed of the pews, and um, there was no one in the, the cathedral at all at the time. And they took a picture. This is 1981, April 25th, 1981. And um, this is what they found. Let's see. What is that? Oh gosh! People sitting in the pews. Oh my God! <laughs> that's wow! Uh, wow! 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 Isn't that wild? Yeah, that's really wild. It kind of makes me want to go out and oh, start here's, investigating. Here's another one. Sorry, he's a close-up. Okay, let's see. Oh golly, that's amazing. That's amazing, <laughs> right? Wow. It's interesting because um, this was done in England in 1956, and. Um, it was photographed by a bank manager. Okay. okay. There were only three people in church at the time. No one would see it. Um, but then they captured this. It's a, it looks like it's a, a woman. Sitting there. They found out that this woman used to go to the church every day. Wow. She used to go, go to the church every day. And in physical form. Wow. And, the and so is it an it, it, it's It's an area that people, they like to go to. They like to visit. They feel yeah. at home there. And um, that's the time you're able to capture that. Yeah. Wow. That's just amazing to see all those. Isn't it? Yeah. It's so much fun. People are loving these pictures, James. <laughs>
Uh, this is a very famous one. Um, oh, I don't know about this one. There's a famous one of a monk in front of a, a, an altar. Okay. Was also done in 1964, um, and it was done in North Hampshire. And uh, the kneeling monk was not visible when Gordon Carroll took this photograph of the empty interior of the church, St. Mary's the Virgin, Woodford, North Hampshire, in 1964. Here's the monk. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Right down. Wow. wow. Oh, God. That's amazing. <laughs> is there, people are asking, what is the name of this book? That I knew they would ask that. I knew yep, they would. Sorry. <laughs> yep. So here it is. It's called Photographing the Spirit World. It is from beyond the spectrum. Wow. But it's out of, it's out of print. So in Florida, unfortunately. Oh, it's that's just amazing. It's out of print. Yeah, I believe it's out of print. You can look it up online. Maybe I'll find it on Amazon or something. Yeah, maybe. Great book. I got this book from the, oh, you hear this, Kelly? You're going to love this one. Do you remember the Aquarian Foundation in Hollywood? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, on Franklin Avenue? Yep. I, I went there. I went and, there too. <laughs> I have some of the books I actually bought. Yeah, this is where I got this from, the Aquarius Foundation. Okay, that would make sense. You know, I think it's still there, James. Is it? I think it is. Wow. And I there think was it a, is. and the first astrologer was a really well known astrologer. Well, when I first went to LA, it was up in Hollywood. And Car uh, Carol Ryder? I'm not sure. I think it was a man. It was, yeah, it was Carol Ryder was a man. Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And he lived near Waddles Park. Yes. Yes. Okay. So my <laughs> girlfriend is an astrologer and wow. I've been to his house. He's long gone. He's but gone all the, did you know that all the astrologers meet there every week? I went to. So did I. <laughs> That's what I was getting at. Okay. I went to meeting this is near too fun. Park, and it was all these astrologers. This is like yeah. 25, 30 years ago. Yep, at least. Yeah. And it was yep. all these astrologers. And I'm like, still that was going the same on. Time I it's still happening. Still That's happening. the first time that it was <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, they've had. I had a lot of fun going to those those events. It was. I think it's like every Monday or Tuesday or something. That's right. It's still yeah. going, huh? Oh, it's still going. Well, I don't know with COVID, but it sure was. It was a couple yeah. of years ago. So Susan Aram says my mother showed up in physical form when I awoke and saw her in my bedroom. I had studied with a psychic medium before that. Indeed, I am grateful. Wow. Oh, yeah, that, that's that amazing. We hear this all the time, but do we do we have the patience? Do we have the awareness? Yeah. Do we can we open up our minds? Can we sit in quiet? Yes. Can we um, put our minds to that space that share with them? Because you know your thought, well, the intention is there. When you have that thought with the intention behind it, you'll get there if you have patience. But I mean, that's how I developed as a child without knowing it. Sitting, in, lying in the dark before sleep. I've always had a little bit of insomnia even as a child. Mm -hmm. So now I know. That yeah, it was preparing me. And I used to see spirit lights all the time around my bedroom at night, all the time. And I remember I was once saying prayers, my mother going to sleep and kneeling down on the side of the room, on the side of the bed, praying. And I said, Mommy, who are all those lights at the end of the bed, those people there? And she said, Oh, those those are God's angels. They're going to help protect you. You never get fear from them. Wow. I must have been asleep. Wow. What a beautiful thing she said, though. Perfect. Yeah, it was very mediumistic as well. But you should know it in those days, of course. It was very different. Wow. That's amazing. Gosh. Why, why are children more open? Yeah. Uh, children are more open because they've just come from the spirit world. So their mindset is of the spirit world. That's how they see things. That's very used to. It's like us when we first, when we first pass over. We're very much around the earth again. We're around our loved ones. We don't know yet about that world. Um, so children are very much their minds are still kind of there. That's they look at things. So, well, you remember you know, what my grandson do. said. Yeah, my grandson, I he's four years old. And I asked him, I asked him, I said, August, what's heaven like? And he said, oh, Gigi, oh, heaven, it's so beautiful. Now, he's had no religion, so just know that. He said, it's so beautiful. I paint in heaven. I said, you paint in heaven, August? He said, yes, my paintings are so beautiful. The colors are so beautiful. I said, are you going to paint while you're here? And he said, oh, no, I'm going to do something different. And then he said, and Gigi, you won't believe it. They take away all your memories when you come here. I said, they take away all your memories? Why do they do that? And he said, so you can create new memories. That was that. Down here on the earth. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's why we true. come, that's to create new memories. And, and Spirit has said to me often, 
you don't make memories in the spirit world. You can only make memories in the physical world. You can't because the time linear, you know, time linear time. That there is, is no time over there. Fascinating. That's fascinating. There's no time there. Time is only relative to this three dimensional world. This is the linear world. So that, that's the past. Here is the past. So is so that the why they're always from. saying create. make memories? Make and they're always memories, saying make memories. Wow. Yeah. You know, this you just answered a big question. Fascinating. Well, just to ask. Well, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it can't get memories over there. There's no time. So what's a memory? It's real. It's real. What's happening? So, and the whole time thing is so interesting about universal time and the aspect of what time really is. Is there really such a thing as time? It's a measurement in this three-dimensional world. Otherwise, it doesn't exist. Right. Oh, my God. I, I just... Physics, I'm going to ask you, how many dimensions are there? <laughs> well, you're asking a human question. <laughs> I don't know. I know. Limitless, yeah. probably. Limitless. We should have one to show that guy we did the seminar with, Kelly. That you did Tom Campbell. I, I bowed out into the second. Okay. Um, is that his name? Tom Campbell. Tom Campbell. On quantum I, I can connect. <laughs> great. We should, I love you that. guys we should, would love, love him. Oh, he's, he's, he's phenomenal. phenomenal. Yeah. He's such a was, genius. I mean, oh, he, total genius. He's so not from here. Yeah. Uh, you could deal with the vibration. I couldn't. It was, it was beyond. Yeah. I, I was, I was, my ears were bleeding because there was just so much information <laughs> and it was like incredible. incredible. Every word was a nugget. It was like, and it was Kelly stuck it out for the 12 hours. I did. Yeah. I stuck it out. I, I don't know it. how, but I did. But it was really worth it. I'm really glad I did. It was, a lot, of words else. It was a lot of information. Yeah, yeah it was a lot of there was a lot. So Amy oh. Amd says, I have a question. Is it possible that we exist here and there because of time and no linear time? 100%. So as 100%. I often say, 70% of our bodies, of, of our soul is outside the physical body. Only 30% is here. So I often say this is the big toe to the soul. We yes. really are there. And this is the physical part of us. So, yes, right. very, very true. I love this. Marilyn Soper says, I took a picture while kayaking in Iowa. A Native American showed in the water. It was the only picture that was black and white of all the pictures I took. I wish I could show it. Wow. I bet that was extraordinary, Marilyn. You wow. Maybe you're mediumistic, too. Oh, sure. That's she has to be to capture that. For sure. Yeah. And that's also, that's you know, goes back to scry divining, scrying. It's called scrying. When you look in water and you're able to, let's say waves and you scry, you look in there clairvoyantly, you can get images. So that's called scrying. Oh. This is that also in Egypt, in the Nile River. And uh, really? I, think, I think in many ways, even in Tibetan, yeah, and, and, and Tibetan and the Indian culture, um, you know, but burning people and burning people, cremating people, and then sitting down the Ganges. I often believe, and I was told that, you know, we talk about the, the river to the side. I think that's one of the, the gateway and the, the portal, the gateway, the doorway to the side. So I think the water, the river, I just think that's part of that, you know, crossing the river is what, what river is there? The sticks, river sticks to you. That's yeah. known, uh, cross the river sticks to get to the side. And spirit is often talking about the other shore, the other side. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's pretty amazing. Wow. Yeah. That is so interesting. My gosh. Um, <laughs> this is so. So Diane says the night my dad died, he visited me in a dream, but not a dream. When they came to tell me, I already knew it was an unexpected death, and it was I was two thousand miles away. What do you call that kind of dream? A lucid dream. It's a lucid dream. It means it's a it's a real activity that was happening. Oh yeah, yeah. What else would it be? Of course it would. Yeah. Which is um, amazing. Um, gosh, Rebecca Smith driver. I took video during the holiday at my mom's house a few years ago. My dad passed. And a few months later, when re watching the video, there were several orbs in the video and her kitten that she had was actually playing with a couple of them and chasing them. I'm pretty sure that one of them was more than likely my dad. Oh, for sure. More than likely. <laughs> Oh, definitely. I mean, a lot of people capture orbs and videos and also security cameras outside their house. Kelly, you showed that like about a month oh, ago. We showed a, a it, video. It was that? unbelievable. What I, We've had some <laughs> amazing, <laughs> if, if anybody has that thing called a ring, ring, you know, you put on your, it's a camera that's the ring, for your house. Yeah, camera. And we, two yeah. people sent us uh, these unbelievable videos uh, the, of, of, of souls that were, you know, watching the house. It was 
it was phenomenal actually and many times you know, in spirit photography too if you, you capture if you go toward a portal you know in the in, in opening to the other dimensions um mm -hmm. you can capture a lot of spirit orbs and spirit people and you'll see a yeah. lot of phenomena yeah and a portal yeah gosh Maybe. kelly mcbride says i have a reoccurring dream with vivid colors and i'm swimming in a river with whales and dolphins swimming with me what does that mean well, whales and dolphins are the highest form of totems. I mean, they're so, they bring such spirituality. I would say, and water, if you ever have a dream where you're in water, it's emotion. So I would say, Kelly, that your, your life is really get, becoming spiritual and you're emotionally getting higher vibration and you're emotionally getting used to the spirituality, accepting it, I would say. It's a great dream. And, and, and water, and water, what does it represent? As if what, emotions. water isn't it like a transformation emotions. of food? emotion yeah yeah really so it depends sometimes if it's like nighttime it will mean something else or if it's in the morning it's, so it's dreams are so fun i love to interpret dreams Susan um, aram when my father ascended this is interesting when my father ascended he called where i was staying i answered the phone there was music at the other end of the phone then called again and no one was there he ascended i annihilated his third anointed anointed his third eye with oil from india and in mine walked into the light for three hours in his hospital room god bless you three days before he ascends it he's in touch with has been lots i'm grateful that's a great story susan thank you for sharing that that's fantastic and a lot of people have had those experiences where someone calls and it's someone on the other end or many times i've had um clients where they be uh remember answering machines where they would be yes. messages from their loved ones who had passed by the way, you know about that. People have cell phones well, now. I've had people with their children over yeah. the had well, a couple. We had a we had a huge situation here on the farm years and years ago when Don's very good friend, uh, Don didn't know it. He was working at the time. He had no idea, but his good friend had passed away. We they he they didn't know it. He had I was actually was in a horrible plane accident, and his mother was here, and the they had the yeah. no. What had it was the all of a sudden. The flute, all of a sudden they hear this voice on the um, recorder and it says, I'm sorry, it didn't mean to happen. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It should never have happened. I'm so sorry. And it was his fellow, a good friend of his, Steve O'Donnell, who had passed away just five seconds before that. Is that something? And he had gotten his voice into that yeah, recorder. It's yeah, it's a flute guy. guy. Yeah. Ended up, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a whole deal with Don. Yeah. Amazing. Crazy. Well, I, the one I told the, the, the other here, which I I still get kicks out of this. I've heard this shopping. When I was doing a demonstration, I brought through a lady's mother, and she kept insisting, "Can't my mother mother's alive?" I said, "No, she's not." And I didn't realize that the mother passed for the time that the girl got left her house to get to that theater or wherever the the hall it was. Her mother passed. That's and came amazing. In. Came in. Pretty wild. But that is. I mean, I had to be the bearer, but. That shows you where you got to be really be the counselor and the therapist and the doc. You know, yeah. you, you got to be very careful with people's life because oh. that could have completely gone south. Oh, so it could have gone where, so you know, south. Yeah. Is that's where you have right. to develop them correctly as a medium or to handle situations right. like that because you'll be throwing them. Moral Nicole dilemmas all Little the time. Said, oh, God. Nicole Little asked James, what is the most memorable experience you've had in your spiritual journey? It's a great question, oh, Nicole. God. Really? Yeah, I would. I wouldn't even know how to begin. Nicole, Nicole is there today. Love, like I said, love your glasses. Love your your whole look. Um, I, I talked about this before here in the show, and and anyways, and, and I've done hundreds of thousands of readings, probably. And you know, you have incredible experiences with Kelly. You know, with each, there are just so many incredible things. Um, I don't know. A couple of things. One was um, someone came through to their mother boy. And said that about a tattoo, which comes in comes in um, common, as you know, Kelly. That they'll say, "Oh, you put a tattoo on your, you know, you put a tattoo on my yeah. name." Yes. Well, um, this guy came through and said, "You have my initial tattooed on your tooth in the back of your mouth." Oh, yes, for Sam. Right. What? That was, that was an okay. I never heard this one. That was an interesting one. It was a good the one. And then the one on my the famous one, on the inside wow. of the tooth, in the middle of. The bottom. <laughs> so she was, you know, no, he was there. And the best one, which I talked about a couple of weeks ago, which is my favorite one. I haven't heard the shot. It's 
and shot and I did 144 episodes of the Beyond <laughs> Show. So we've seen so many experience and had some experience of communication. But this one, I haven't told you, this happened in Maui, the one in Maui about four years ago when um, yeah. it was a Maui Performing Arts Center and it was 200 people and at the very end, um, this little girl, spirit girl, she was a little blonde hair. Yeah. About three or four, it was her birthday, pigtails, and she said, well, to my mommy and daddy. And I explained to the audience, I shared with the information. And there's a couple at the very end, in the back row, a big dude guy, big muscular guy, and the wife. And um, she said, Daddy, I want to thank you for, for my tattoo, my angel wings. I love my angel wings. Uh -huh. And they everyone was like, huh? And he's crying. The wife's crying. I said, do you understand that? He stands up, takes off his T-shirt, turns around on his back. He has two big uh -huh. angel wings he had tattooed for his little. Wow. And that was her birthday uh -huh. present. That day was a birthday. Oh, not a dry eye in the house. Okay. Oh my yeah. gosh, that was, that's amazing, James. That was such They're that's such great. an amazing. They're all great. Children, okay. uh, children, and pets. Oh, yeah, that's so true. It's so true. <laughs> um, here's a great question: How, What is the best way, easiest way to raise your vibration? Well, to me, um, it's for different ways. Um, I love. Love so mm -hmm. meditation, quieting the mind, bringing yourself gratitude. I call it sitting the power, yeah, gratitude, sitting the power of your love, loving yourself, bringing yourself, right. appreciating yourself, yeah, loving yourself, agree. not being unkind to yourself, mm -hmm. care of yourself. That's the best way, and taking care ahead, of yourself, Renee. yeah. All right, Renee, we, here we go. Yourself. Nina Smith, at night, I feel presence and I can hear the presence as well. If that makes sense. I noticed that when I take my phone out and take photos around me, feeling will leave. In the photos, I captured my uncle, my grandmother's face, and she's smiling and a photo of a man with an old army hat holding a sword. I was thinking it was an archangel. Wow. That's amazing. Um, it, she says, I've taken mediumship. Will the mediumship I'll be Wonderful. opening soon? Or mediumship two will be opening soon. Yeah, I, I imagine you're obviously a very good medium. Excellent. Now, mediumship two will be open next year. When I open that up next year. Mm. So thank you. I think it's great. It's great you're doing that, that you recognize it, that you're going to do something with it. I think you're very talented. And I think the world would be missing out if you didn't share your abilities. Yeah. So mediumship two will be opening up next year. For those who don't know, they're having a, a Black Friday sale over the holidays. It's a big sale to schools. So. Oh, good, be, good. Okay. So Tracy Schnapp yeah. says, I captured a lot of orbs and photos while traveling around Ireland. Oh, I bet. An Irishman who looked at my photos <laughs> said these were photos of the fairies. Then a few years later, I went to a psychic oh, and she said that fairies were my spirit guides. She had no idea I had these photos tucked away. Amazing. Yeah, Ireland's yep. a very mystical place. Oh. Very place. I, they have fairy rings everywhere. I mean, I, oh. I taught there. I Lady, worked there. Wait a uh, Let, did I ever tell you what I saw there? I went to the Aran Islands, no, you and I was, it's a medieval you know, iron. It's totally medieval, and I'm looking down, and I was, you know, I didn't even have the words to describe what I saw, but I saw a gnome. I saw a gnome with my physical eyes. He had a pointy nose. He was wearing little overalls. He was like this big. It, you know, it kind of takes your breath away when you see something like that. So they exist. Yeah, I mean, they're all around. Elementals They're all around. And divas are some, oh, yeah. Oh. That's why I have nice food in my house because I work with them. They tell so me what true. they need. I put, I put out food for them. I put out Good physical for you. food. I'll put bread. I'll put out sweet. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I take that. it very seriously. Idea. because um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, Oh, yes. Your garden will grow. Oh, I loved them. Um, I, when I was in Ireland, the first time I was in Ireland, I uh, have an Irish background. And um, my hotel, um, I got foreign money, whatever it was, euros, whatever the money was at the time. And I, I put in the top drawer under my socks so i know where it was and i came back at lunch or after the, after the class that day to get some dinner so i'm going to take some money out and i'm looking for it it's not there and i'm like what and i'm like actually you know as you travel and you go through time changes and your mind is always gone anyway something and, and you know me as a whirlwind i'm like hey james what did you do with it? there's a four walls here you had to put it somewhere i couldn't find it i had to go to dinner without money and i came back and um I put my shoes off, bent down, and the stack of money was literally in the center, underneath the bed, in the center of under the bed. Okay. Right there, How could that up. be? No, I How could that be? I mean, I know I'm crazy, but I wouldn't. So, that leprechauns. is uh, leprechauns. I'm telling you, they all exist. Oh my gosh. Now, I'm, you're going to be doing on, Feb on 
on November 19th, the day of the 19th. eclipse, you are actually doing the, day of the eclipse. I mean, an evening of spirit, That's spirit messages. Yes. Gonna be outstanding on that day. Right, Wait, what? The eclipse, right? I know it's the day of the eclipse. It's the eclipse it should be. Oh, it's it'll be a good one. It'll it, be a good one. You shouldn't miss it out, everybody. You should come. For it'll that. be it's a be pretty, great uh, one, intense. everybody. I mean, because that's going to be an extraordinary yeah. event for people. The emotions are going to run high that day. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. Yes. Yeah, I'll be sitting in. I'm a development circle right before that. So I'm sitting in a uh, quiet right before that for an hour before the before that night. I'll be sitting quietly for an hour before. And so I might even do some uh, automatic writing beforehand and see what spirit wants to say there. Come to me, come to me on a, a pad. And I'm going to give up the messages I get that way. So that's going to be part of that evening, too. Oh, I love that Isn't idea. That that's great. And I loved what you did today. <laughs> There's a you yes, I don't know if anyone got an image with the phone. I wonder if anybody got images from that. I did it. I had my phone up like that. I thought that was so cool. I, I did. I, I got it on my ceiling, but it was a light. It wasn't. Uh, I looked and it wasn't. It wasn't anything. I okay. put it, it wasn't. Sometimes you capture them. A lot of conditions involved. Yeah. It was a good one. Yeah. But yeah. November nineteenth. That's right, Kelly. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. It's and what are you up to on Thursday? Um, well, can not I ask this you Thursday. Anything? Well, not this Thursday not because our producer. Me. Well, our producer is going to be away this week, so I, I won't be on this week. But he deserves to be away. <laughs> he Amazing. does. But Monday, you and I are going to be talking about our memorabilia, some of our favorite things. Yes, and I will try to find that spirit uh, picture of the of this, oh, yeah. the, the man coming down and hugging. I'll look that oh, up. Oh, yeah, that's so my files. Cool. The files of all old memorabilia and stuff and my you know, early development. That's going to be so fun. Some wild stories. I actually think I have something that um, I think was in Brazil and at a book signing. I think I have this. I'll look for it. And I was doing a book signing and this, and a lot of people at this book signing, but 500 people. And I remember that this uh, guy said, uh, Mr. Van Prague, my friend has something very special for you. And I said, okay. He goes, give, you can give it to him. And the guy goes, Bleh. and he materialized oh the flower. God. In his mouth, an apport, a spirit apport. And oh. I said, I'm not touching that. <laughs> but I, I might have it somewhere. I, and yeah, so I think I have that somewhere. I'm looking, it hasn't fallen apart. But, yeah, but well, I'll get some interesting things. From, we have interesting, we've led interesting lives. So uh, it'll be, a, we've had interesting lives, that's for sure. Oh my gosh. Well, this was so much fun. I'm so glad you guys, you got to participate here too. Chandra. Yeah, Chandra, great. Uh, we're doing a photo shoot tomorrow up on new website. There'll be a new websites coming in, and that'll be next year in February. So we're preparing for that and uh, doing a whole photo shoot tomorrow, brand new for the websites, the school site, and for the vampire.com site. So Shanti has come down from LA to uh, work with me to do my makeup because I need a lot of makeup these days. And, oh, and uh, great. yeah, we haven't seen her in so long. It's great, it's great oh, hanging out have with the fun. All right, Thanks, everybody. I'll thanks so bit. much. I'm home. <laughs> Bye, Thanks, Renee. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Renee. Bye. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. The James and Kelly Show.